Hey everyone, and welcome to the bathroom demo video, part of the Ginger with a Hammer remodel series. We'll start off the video with the tools that I purchased, and hopefully this helps you out in figuring out what you'd like to purchase when you undertake something similar. To make more videos just like this possible, hit like and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you. You'll want a hard hat to protect your head. You'll want a Tyvek suit to keep dust and debris off of you while you work. You'll want a full face face mask with a filter. HEPA filters, this is for rigid. My shop vac is a rigid vac. Poly hanging or seaming tape. This will tape your plastic to any surfaces. Zip wall zippers to give you access through your poly sheeting to other areas. A portable GFCI safety adapter for your vacuum cleaner or high draw electrical devices while you work. Contractor bags. Work gloves, ideally demo that have extra padding. Extra batteries. Sawzall blades and sheetrock blades for miscellaneous cutting. An air mover to keep dust and debris vented outside. A light tower or some kind of portable light so you can see if it gets dark. A spray bottle to keep dust to a minimum while you work. These are the poles that go with the zip wall system. You don't have to use them, but they're super helpful if you have the means to buy them. There's my rigid shop vac, drop cloth or sheeting, crowbar, hammer, pry bar, drill with some bits, and your sawzall. These are some befores, so take note of the what looks like the real sheetrock ceiling, the older tile, finishes, fixtures, the layout. This will all change as part of this process, but it has to start from square one. This is in the corner. There was a large towel or, you know, you could call it like a miscellaneous storage closet there that took up a lot of space in the room. You can see the radiator tucked in the bottom there of that cabinet where the sink and where the toilet were located before. I've started clearing the cabinet out here, getting ready to take the doors off. Here I've removed the curtain from around the tub and everything has more or less been cleared out. This is the tub, so we had some emergency repairs. There were loose tiles, there was cracked grout, a lot of places for water to get in. And for the sake of our sun and that we were tearing a lot of stuff apart, this is just to show kind of a general before with the older hardware, everything in place where it is before everything was shifted around as part of the, the reno. So you have to start somewhere. So here that you could see where that cabinet used to be in the corner at this point. I had already torn that out. Um, and I'm working my way across the, the wall with the crowbar I showed earlier. Um, that gave me a lot of leverage. It made it very easy to pull the tiles away. Um, kind of, it was hard to get started, but then once you've, you know, I removed a few courses of tile, then it got easier. It gave me something to pry against um, and to really be able to pull it from the wall. They were stuck. So what you kind of can't see is that the tiles were just ripping the plaster right off the wall. So they, they were, uh, they were glued, they were affixed pretty tightly on the wall. So I'm just working my way up. Um, you know, the tile was the priority, try to free that, um, then kind of create an area for myself that was exposed with the lath, which is the wood, uh, horizontal strips you see, um, and kind of just work my way up and across working my way around the bathroom, um, just being sure to take advantage of areas that I had exposed because it made it easier to pry. Then I eventually switched over to the, the hand pry bar, the smaller one, um, again, that I outlined earlier in the tools. Um, so at this point, I'm using the small hand mallet um, or sledge, you could say, hand sledge, and uh, that, that hand crowbar or pry bar. Helps with trim, helps with stuff like this. It just it was a little thinner than the crowbar, so once I had torn a good amount um, really, this was the only way to go. Really helped me slip under the plaster and really pull it right off of the wall. Now I've switched to the tub side of the bathroom. So same process here. You can see I'm starting a few tiles, getting them to release from the wall, and just working my way up and across. You'll see here, once I get to this point, I'm releasing the bar from the ceiling and the wall that used to hold our shower curtain. 
So what you can tell here is it was about 90 degrees when I did this. So after about three hours of this nonstop, I uh, kind of lost my mind a little bit. So rock and roll helps with that. So what you're seeing me do here is this is preparing for the roughen of a roughen just meaning kind of fitment, you know, kind of seeing where things fit of a larger medicine cabinet. So the one that used to be there, you can see how small that opening is. Um, and if you look really close, you can kind of see where I've marked with a, a Sharpie kind of where the corners of the new one will go. So this is just backing out screws. It's looking where the wires come through the, um, the lath here um, and really trying to prepare this as much as possible to make the um, fitting as far as um, you know, two by fours or any framing that's necessary, make it as easy as possible um, and have an opening that's um, a little bit bigger and you want to allow yourself a little bit of wiggle room, but at the same time, you want it to be close enough that in this case, um, the overhang of the portion that you look at, the actual front of the medicine cabinet is actually much larger than the, the cabinet itself that goes in the wall. So you have a little bit of play here where it's going to cover a lot. So I just wanted to give myself a, a gracious amount of room here and make sure I got anything out of the way as far as old framing to make the install of the new vanity as easy as possible. What we're looking at here is the walls are completely bare and cool surprise. The ceiling, the original ceiling is much higher than I thought. There's furring strips, which are thin pieces of wood, and then sheetrock was installed over that. So the original ceiling is much higher. At this point, the furring strips with the rigid insulation I found is much more visible. You can see it to the left there. Uh, I've torn the rest of the furring and insulation off of this portion of the ceiling. It is a plaster ceiling as well. You can see the furring strips and the rigid insulation here. So the next step is to remove that layer on the rest of the bathroom ceiling. And the next phase here, that's all gone and the plaster ceiling is gone. Looks super easy, right? Um, no, it took a long time to rip all that down. But you, you can see here, I also started ripping the um, lath off the ceiling as well, exposing the old insulation and actually finding some moisture marks in here. So it's actually good that this gets torn out and opened up. Oh, I wanted to go down to the studs so bad in this room, but realistically and time and money wise, it just made sense to leave it intact. Those were exterior walls, leave the original insulation. But you can see here that I've successfully removed um, all the rest of the materials from the ceiling to the joists. So this is completely empty, completely bare, um, and ready to be finished uh, with modern materials, which was a huge win. Last but not least, everyone's favorite part, cleanup. And once that was done, I was exhausted. If you liked this video, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for more content just like this.